I still write at least a poem a day. Yeah, there you go, dude. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to be talking with Adam Crawford. We had a great conversation. A couple things, okay? Because we're going to be talking about audiobooks and you making your own audiobooks. But here's the thing. When we recorded this episode, I was sick with some fucking sinus thing. And Adam was sick with some stomach thing. And we were both exhausted. <laughs> and, and like, I didn't put this in the episode or anything, but we kept talking about, yeah, like, this is like a really, like, low energy thing. We got to up the energy here. We got to, like, you know, we got to do something. We got to make this not depressing. We got to do that. We, we, we had some fun. We had some fun. Adam's stuff is fucking amazing. It's super fucking powerful, super visceral. You could get all of it over on Bandcamp, and there will be a link down below, okay? So make sure you go check him out. And also follow him on Instagram. Um, I know he's not really doing it right now, but if he ever decides to go back and do his live streams where he reads books of poetry to people, um, that was a treat. And I think you can actually watch some of the older ones that he did on there. And he read everybody, like, um, you could find all sorts of shit on there. And he's a great reader. So um, definitely check that out. Other things going on right now. Um, I am completely behind on everything. Um, but I'm doing okay. Oh, the new chapbook. Fuck. I'll have it in the outro. Whatever. Um, but my new chapbook, What the Fuck is Happening, um, will probably be out on Friday. Um, today is Thursday or is today Wednesday as I'm recording this. I don't fucking know. But it will be, the book itself will be out Friday. And you can order it on the Etsy shop. Bombay Beach Lit Fest Banali thing was amazing. It was so much fun. There is going to be an episode coming up here shortly where um, I, like a fuckhead, I didn't record all of it. Um, I missed the first part of the presentation, um, started recording it. Then, um, I don't know if I bumped my phone or whatever, but then it stopped recording. So then I came back and it was recording a little bit, um, more. And then, uh, I read one poem and then we had the like Q and a portion, which was fucking amazing. It was really good. Um, met a lot of great people, and some of the people I met are actually going to be on the show um, in the near future, so uh, we'll hear about what they're doing and stuff, so that's awesome. There's also going to be a uh, vlog of my time at the um, Banali, so if you're interested in seeing how Southern California does its version of Burning Man... Um, definitely go over to my YouTube page and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you know when the fucking video comes out. So there's that. Um, Bukowski Book Club, we are reading through um, You Get So Alone at Times That It Just Makes Sense. We are doing the first 112 pages this week. And um, there is a introduction video to the book on my YouTube. And then um, next Monday, I think, the uh, members-only um, review and me reading my favorite poems out of those first 112 pages uh, will be in there. So uh, make sure you jump on that. Other things that I was posting videos of this week since the last episode of the podcast. Um, I did a video talking about 1984 being banned. George Orwell's book. The irony is not lost on me as it probably is not lost on you. Okay, so make sure you get over and watch that. Um, and then I did another one of my responding to comments and questions videos. And in that video, um, a question came up that was really kind of powerful. It was 
Um, like, do you ever end up with obsessive fans or stalkers because of your art? And if so, how do you deal with it? And like, how do you prepare to not have those problems um, with your art? And so I did uh, the video talking about that. And then um, on the member side, I did a little more like personal shit, like inside baseball shit. Um, about my own life dealing with um, obsessive fans and stalkers and shit like that. And honestly, I probably didn't go as hard as I could have. But, you know, maybe I will another time. But um, so that's up on the members feed. And then I also did a video talking about, because another question that came in was, do you really make a chat book every month? The answer is almost all the time, but not all the time. That video uh, went up, I think, yesterday. That's there, and I kind of go through, I guess it would be considered my publishing history as far as chat books go. So if that's interesting to you, go take a look at it. And you'll also, and while I was making that video, I was printing out the covers for uh, the, was it the cover? Well, I don't know. I was printing out um, the new chat book. What in the fuck is happening? For those of you interested in hearing about all of the legal shit with my film rights, um, if that's something you're interested in, I haven't really done it yet. I've just been doing little updates here and there. But I think not this week, but maybe by next week, there's going to be a lot of like definitive shit about that. So I'm going to be able to start talking about it more. So if you are an artist that's ever wondered, like, I wonder what happens to my stuff if the company that put my stuff out suddenly goes out of business. Or I wonder what happens to my stuff if the company that owns my stuff um, files for bankruptcy and then gets absorbed by another company. I wonder what happens to my stuff. If you've had any of these questions, I might be able to give you very hard answers um, very soon here. So that'll be fun. Um, or you could just put your shit out yourself and never have to fucking deal with that shit. Uh, am I right? Okay, so there's that. I will be in Malden, Massachusetts on May 13th. Um, courtesy of Jeff Taylor from the Garage Poets. Tentatively, a lot of other surrounding... Um, New England-ish areas and um, just East Coast in general. I think I'm going to, the plan is be there from May 1st through the 13th at least, maybe the 14th or 15th. If you want me in your area, let me know because that's when that shit's going on. And if you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if he would want to come out here. Hmm, I probably do. So just shut the fuck up to your mind and just write me an email or hit me up or something. The other thing, I was talking with Shaylin about the documentary and um, we were talking about filming certain parts of the documentary while I'm out there on the East Coast. So, um, yeah, get on that shit if you're interested in being a part of that. So without any further ado, because I'm all about the do, um, I would rather spend this time chatting with Adam Crawford. So I'm going to shut the fuck up now and on with the schlow. One of the things that I was super excited about and wanting to talk to you about was you're doing audiobooks and putting them up on Bandcamp. Can you explain how that came about and how that was the way to go for you? Well, I wanted to do like chat books and stuff like you and Shay and some other people are doing, but I don't, my printer hasn't worked in about a year and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I decided it wasn't working reliably enough that I was going to do that seriously. So plus paper is expensive and I didn't have a job. Ink is expensive, but audiobooks are free and Bandcamp is free. So that's why I've been doing audiobooks. I think that's why I started doing it. Yeah. And you've been doing them like every month, right? Uh, one a month. Uh, this month I might do a few just to see what happens. My first couple were full length, like chapbook length, and uh, no one seemed to care. Then I did some little shorter ones with a, only four or five poems, and people seemed more receptive to that. So I think I'm going to be putting out smaller audiobooks with less poems in them more frequently mm -hmm. in the future. I just put out one today. 
It's called uh, God Made You Special and He Loves You Very Much. Yeah, I was just checking that one out. I fucking love the title Pillows on a Curbside Couch. That's just amazing. I love that. Are are these like themed or is it just if you come up with a good title, you run with it? Mostly a good title. I'm not great at uh, sequencing by theme, but Pillows was supposed to be a Valentine's Day collection, but I didn't get around to it till a couple weeks after. But yeah, those are all about love. Yeah. That one's themed. Do you, when you're putting these together, is the length of the poem like something you think about when you're putting them together or are you just like, these are the poems I'm going to put in this one? Yeah, I think about that. I've been putting the last few collections out. I've been listing them as EPs, Mm -hmm. which are, I come from music and in music an EP as distinct from an LP is like a short collection of a few songs. Yeah. And so I guess I just go for under 15 minutes. As long as it's under that, I I really don't care how long the poems are, Okay. but it's nice if I can get a a long one or two in so that they're not too short. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was um, going back through and listening to a bunch of them today because you read really well. Like, oh, you, thanks. you have like a, a great, like, conversational tone, but your inflections are great. Like, it's still exciting to listen to somebody read, you know? And a lot of people, when they read, they're just like, this is the poem and now it's done. That's fucking awesome. But, like, I swear, like, my favorite fucking poem out of like the ones I was listening to are is like still. In the first one, where is it? The farm cat. I love that. Oh, thanks. I don't know what the fuck it is, but like, it's just that from that first collection, the how to enjoy being dead. Whenever I think of that collection, that's the poem that like I think about. Uh, that's my attempt at like a Bukowski cat poem. <laughs> you did really, really well. History of a tough motherfucker or whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. The farm cat. The farm cat wags its tail for months, awaiting a pat from the farmer. It gets one. The farmer scratches its head and under its dirty chin and rubs his knuckles between the ears. The farmer leaves in the truck and is gone for two weeks. The farm cat stalks the acres and the molehills within, turning up field mice and gophers. The farm cat survives, but more than food desires the farmer. The farmer comes back, and the farm cat springs to greet him. The farmer notices the farm cat. Possibly, next time, the farmer will put both his hands on the farm cat, like when the farm cat was small and lived in the farmhouse. The farm cat goes about being a farm cat, and the farmer tends to larger things, and months pass without eye contact, search for, nor happened upon. In the autumn, the farm cat limps to the house with a fucked up leg. It calls for the farmer. The farmer does not come. It sleeps by the door for three days. One morning, the farmhouse dogs break loose from the back door and chase the farm cat into a tree. They bark at it, and it does not come down. The sun sets, then rises again, and the dogs beneath the tree have gone. The farm cat climbs down and walks away from the farmhouse into the wild acres of land beyond. It crosses through a hole in the fence wire and keeps going until it comes across new fields with new mice and gophers. The farm cat slowly forgets the farm and the farmer. One morning, the farm cat peers out of the grass and sees something in the middle of the country road. It's a dead cat with a squashed-in head. The farm cat approaches the body and looks down at it the same way it once looked up at a man. Speaking of cats, um, on the Pillows on a Curbside Couch, the as long as cats can love, that's great, too. Thanks. Just the, the whole, like, you're you're in trouble because you didn't put your hand on the back. And then the cat comes up and you just like put the hand on the cat and (laughs) just the juxtaposition is really good. I love it. As long as cats can love. Cats are basically sociopaths. People say this, dog people mostly, I think, and it does make sense. Cats' eyes stare uncomfortably. They're always looking down on you from high places, and they always want something, but that something is never just you. My girlfriend is mad at me because she has to ask me to rub her back in bed, even though she always rubs my back without me having to ask her. 
It was a nothing issue that escalated. What the hell else is new? Now I'm in the doghouse again. It's just me and the damn cat. I lay on the couch under a blanket. The cat comes over and waits. It expects me to rub its head. I do. Then I stroke it all the way down to the tip of its tail. I stop, and the cat waits for me to start petting it again, but I don't. It jumps on top of me. It steps on my balls. It comes to within a few inches of my face and sits down on me like a fat hen on an egg. It looks at me with a lazy expression through half-closed yellow eyes. I stare back at it a long time. Cats are basically sociopaths. They're incapable of reciprocating love. I pet the cat. The cat closes its eyes and purrs. I stop. It nudges its head into my open hand. I pet it some more, then stop, and put my hand back under the blanket. The cat opens its eyes, looks into mine again, then leans in and begins rubbing its hairy face against the point of my nose, as if it were an outstretched finger to scratch an itch with. Whoever said cats were sociopaths is a simple-minded lover, and probably a dog person too. Dogs make love look easy and noble. Love at its least problematic is stupidity. Dogs love fully and foolishly. You don't have to meet them halfway. They'll love you more than enough for the both of you. Cats aren't so simple. Cats aren't so giving. Love is difficult and rickety. Expect misunderstandings to happen, because they will. The cat wants. The heart wants. I want. She wants. I worry often that maybe I'm a sociopath. But as long as cats can love, I understand that I don't have to be a dog for her. It's probably one of the only poems I wrote where I had a clear sense of juxtaposition. And mm-hmm. one thing that happens is... Um, equivalent in some way to something else yeah a lot of my poems are just stuff happening with no uh no significance really attached to any event which is how most of life is for me nothing to write home about well i mean it's especially with juxtaposition it's hard to be able to i don't know like live your life and then like look at it in a literary sense you know what i'm saying like um i just was i wasn't arguing with him but um Matthew Buckley Smith, I was talking to him the other day and he was getting on me about, um, he's like, your life shouldn't have plot. Like plot is for like a novel to have like a character arc. If you're living your life with plot, like you're like purposefully setting yourself up to have horrible things fucking happen to you. Could be that horrible things are happening to you anyway. And so your life has somewhat of a plot could be that way too. Yeah. I, I just feel like, you know how, like when you're reading a story or something, like the character in the beginning of the book will have the since everything follows the goddamn hero's journey, um, the 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 hero will have this like moment. Um, the inciting incident happens, and then the character must decide what to do, and then the whole rest of the book is him on that quest. I feel like hundreds of things are happening, and there really hasn't been an inciting incident yet, or at least one that's given me a clear option of like you could either do this or do that. And I'm just like wandering around, like waiting for the fork in the road, you know? I feel there's a, there's a title I want to use for a collection someday called life at the Dursleys. Uh, You're familiar with Harry Potter, right? Yeah. 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 You ever read any of these books, any of those books? I read the first one with my nephew and then never read any more of them. That's fair. The Dursleys are the family or the shitty muggle family that Mm -hmm. Harry lives with. Yeah. And uh, I like the Harry Potter books. Um, Read them in middle school and high school. They were fun. Um, I always like the beginning of the second book where Harry is at the Dursley's house for the summer and he's waiting for school to start and it's just, it just sucks. And then like his uncle or whatever puts bars on the windows to make sure he can't like escape. And then, uh, then his buddy Ron and his asshole buddies come along with a flying car and they're like, we're busting you out. Get an asshole. We're going to yeah. school. And I feel like my life is waiting for that to happen. Mm-hmm for that Hollywood rescue scene to come along when my buddies all come along and we, we go on an adventure and we don't have to do this shit anymore. Yeah. And it never comes. I feel like that's, that's everybody's life. We're all at the Dursleys waiting for our asshole friends to come in their, in their flying car and sweep us off to something 
better. That is so fucking true. Good God. I totally remember that. I, I saw the movie of that one and I remember that. God damn, dude. Yeah, I feel like the problem is, is that I know I have to be the one. It's almost like a flying Uber. Like we have to decide like that we're going to go. We have to decide that we're going to bust out. And so we have to order the fucking Uber, wait for the Uber to show up, and then we have to fucking go. But yeah. I, fe- I feel like I've been waiting for the friends to like bust me out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm lazy, though. I don't want to prepare my own Uber, plan my own adventure, plan my own life. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's much easier when you witness something happen, and then because of that, you have to do something. Like when you're just sitting, that that's that's tricky. Um, when you are putting these collections together, is it like more like chronological of time? Like you're sitting there and you write these five poems and then put them out, or do you like go through stacks and decide what you want to put? It's a little of both. I try to keep them sort of chronological because mm-hmm. I have poems that are elaborating on poems I wrote earlier before, and it would be weird if I put those out. And then later yeah. put out mostly no if i just if i feel like it, I'll, I'll just put it in part of a collection and how do you do your artwork um i don't because i can't draw i'll just usually pick like a i'll go on ms paint and just pick a color or something and there's a shape tool that i can put circles or triangles or whatever yeah yeah yeah. real basic stuff Gotta no the, the aesthetic's cool like it's really clean good on you for that what is it necessities the mother of invention so you've been having when you say people didn't seem to care if you were putting out shorter stuff than longer stuff um what kind of response have you been getting other than that uh more than zero which is a good start more than zero before the response yeah before the response was zero now it's a little more than zero sometimes it's one person tells me hey i liked that yeah sometimes two more than zero <laughs> more than zero is awesome man I love more than zero. Yeah. I'll take more than zero. For real. So you said you had a couple more for this month, you think? Yeah. I think maybe in a week I'm going to put out another one. If you're reading these, you're probably me. Cheeky. And then at the end of the month, I'll put out another one. I don't think I decided on a title for the last one yet. And we'll see how that goes. And if it goes good, I'll put them out regularly just like that. Maybe one week or so. If not, Um, I'll go back to one a month. How far, like how many do you have like, like ready to go? Um, I'm like three ahead. Three ahead. That's awesome. And when you record them, do you record them all in one sitting or so far I've been recording them in batches, like two or three at a time. Yeah. My buddy Trevor who's listed as producer. He just records them and takes out the peas and the, the, the pops and stuff that are not yeah. supposed to be there. If I flood a line, he'll rewind it so I can try it again. Yeah. 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 So where are you recording this at his place? Yeah. His place. He lives like halfway across town from me. Right on. Yeah. I was going to ask you how you recorded it. Does he have like a studio or anything or what is it? Yeah. He's got like a home studio and stuff. He's recorded some local bands around here. So he knows how to mix and engineer and stuff. He went to school for a while. So I think he quit after a couple of years. He didn't complete his program, but he knows how to do the shit mix and do levels and stuff. Yeah. So what do you want to do? Like, what is your kind of like, not end game, but like, what's the goal? Goal, I guess, would be, I don't know, to become a famous poet or writer or something. But uh, mm-hmm. less than that, practical goals would be, uh, I'm probably going to do this at least for the next year. And after that, I'll figure something else out, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a book on Amazon of selected poems or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I'm still on the fence with Amazon and poetry, but um, it's, it's better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I just feel like I have to do a little more marketing than i normally would like more paid marketing so that's a thing but it's not it's not bad it's not bad at all i just i get bitchy about formatting with ebooks because like the words and lines change depending on how big the text is that the people are reading it on and that just drives me absolutely fucking crazy are the proofs uh free or do you get a free proof or do you um to- no if you're doing a paperback you have to buy it but it's like two bucks or anywhere from two to four bucks okay so it's not like crazy or anything like that um and then they put that big proof mark across the front of it so you can't but like even when you are buying like copies like if you wanted to have a bunch of copies to sell or give out or whatever you could still order them and it's still roughly that price when you um buy them from amazon as author copies so it's pretty cool i posted a the other thing i've also been doing is occasionally i'll post a, a, a poem that the text for a poem that I'm not going to put in a collection just on my Instagram. Okay. And uh, here's one I posted. Uh, you liked it actually is February 24th. It doesn't have a title. I'll just read that one. 
In the hollow of the throat is a lump that won't swallow, like the thought of death. Thoughts of the body, the body doesn't belong to me. Nothing truly belongs to anyone. The discomfort of the realization is just mild enough to not be what might call painful, and just present enough that it can't be ignored. A tender buttock, the soul's buttock, in an uncomfortable chair. I think of the body and the throat, and the empty space that fills both, that is both and is all things, and I want to scream existence, though all that comes out is emptiness, silent, insubstantial, and terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. That wasn't very happy. No, that was that was awesome, dude. You like Thank that you. though. I got uh, where that came from. I never get tired of being uh, paranoid and complaining. Have you been reading anything lately? Um, like poetry wise or anything? Well, let's do poetry wise first. Um, yeah, I've been reading. Um, I've been reading a um. Uh, selected works of uh, William Carlos Williams. Oh, nice. I love William Carlos Williams. He, uh, I like a lot of poetry. Uh, what William Carlos Williams does for me is he makes suburban life. Well, actually not suburban life, but the weird parts where, uh, where wilderness and suburbia kind of intersect, like, you know, maybe a stretch of highway that's got, you know, asphalt for the road, but there's also some desert off to the side or some mm -hmm. long grass or whatever. William Carlos Williams is that poet for me yeah that's what he brings to me and i really like that he's got one poem i think it's called pastoral mm -hmm. pastoral he's got a great like description of like a old wooden box or something in an alleyway and that's really beautiful when he uh when he describes it uh as for not poetry i've been reading i've been reading um uh carl sandberg's uh biography on lincoln oh shit yeah yeah that's not really it's not fiction or anything but I haven't read any fiction in a about a month. Yeah, but the Lincoln thing's pretty good. Lincoln thing's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's the definitive biography on Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Yeah, you probably have the, I would say, the widest taste in poetry than probably anyone I know. Like you, really? re yeah, you read almost everybody. Yeah, a little bit. I agree with that. Um, I don't like all of it, but yeah, I've read a lot of the, I guess the majors, mm -hmm. major poets. Uh, growing up, we had a lot of, uh, my parents weren't into poetry, but we had poetry anthologies in our bathroom. And yeah. this was in the days, my, my childhood was before you could take your phone into the bathroom and distract yourself with that. Yeah. So when you're taking a shit, what I would do is either stare at the wall or I'd grab something and read it. And so I was reading poetry anthologies before I could read very well, before I knew what many of the words meant. And that makes some poets actually really interesting when you don't know what the words are, like uh, like The Kraken by Alfred Lord Tennyson is an old, foppy, classic Victorian poem. Yeah. Real boring if you're an adult and you have basic word comprehension, but when you're a little kid, uh, some of the words in that poem are interesting, like sunken. I didn't know what sunken meant. That was the first word I ever heard that. and It sounded really scary when he yeah. wrote it. So. That's awesome. Like, what were, who were some of the poets that, like, really got you into wanting to not just read it, but to write it? Um, well, Bukowski is one of them, but other than Bukowski, um, Thomas Hardy. Okay. I sort of want to say Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is usually everybody's first poet. Yeah. He's about the only one that uh, isn't boring for me. <laughs> <laughs> William Carlos Williams, I already mentioned. Um, W.H. Auden. Oh, uh, Marianne Moore. Marianne Moore, I used to write a lot of formal poetry to start with. Yeah. Because I I didn't see anyone doing it for good reason. It, it is very out of vogue. And, you know, whatever reasons there were for the past centuries to write formal poetry, we sort of don't have those reasons for it anymore. You know, formal poetry is rhythmic and we have music and hip hop. We don't need our words to be rhythmic anymore. Or um, rhyme again, music. Yeah. We don't need our words to rhyme. We have songs that do that. So there's no need for formal poetry, but I still like a lot of formal poetry. And I was writing a lot of that when I started because I didn't see very much of it. And an early influence on me when I was writing poetry like that was Marianne Moore, because what she would do is she went more by syllable count than by meter. I've always sucked at meter. I can't do the, that bothers me and it makes me 
a little bit of uh, having to stifle your words can help you be creative with thinking of different ways of saying things, but too much stifling is just not fun. Yeah. And Marianne Moore was like, just do syllable count, dude. And in fact, if you have a word that's too long, you can uh, break it off and in jam it, continue the word on the, the next line or something. So Marianne Moore was more in terms of style than content. She was a big influence on the way I used to write poetry. I haven't really written a rhyming poem in years mm -hmm. at this point. Well, because you've written a lot of lyrics and shit too, right? For bands and stuff. That too. I've written songs, so. Yeah. Although with poems, I tried to go for more exact rhymes. And with songs, I'm like, oh, box and car kind of rhyme. That's good enough. <laughs> I'm a little less, uh, I was a little less anal when it came to writing mm -hmm. songs. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I, um, like, I was really into Poe too. And when I first started writing poetry, I was doing um more formal shit but i think it was because i thought it was more romantic and not romantic in like a like a sexual sense but like just the whole idea of being a poet like it was this like like big like depressing victorian fucking thing that you had to do you know um so that that was my real reason um your reasons better <laughs> I'm a little bit of a D and D nerd too, and I like some fantasy. So you know, I got nothing against poetry. That's all depressing and formal, and you know, yeah. shall I compare thee to Summer's Day? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something to it, but I don't really want to write poems like that. Yeah, for myself. So what's um, uh, besides the William Carlos Williams one that you're reading right now, um, or just read? What's uh? poetry collection that you've read like within the last like year let's say that um surprised you that you think people should go check out um this one's not really a super obscure or anything but i really fell in love with the hawk in the rain by ted hughes mm -hmm. that was his like first or second collection um really visceral imagery one of the things that i really <laughs> loved about um when you were doing those like live readings on instagram is you would like take a moment after each poem and like talk about what what you thought of it and how it made you feel and stuff like that and just that personal touch on top of that was really fucking cool so Thanks. i appreciated that um i'll try to remember to leave a instagram link for your instagram under this because that's that was kind of i don't want to say that that was the show but like i think at least for me like that was the main reason why i would watch you do those not so much for you just reading the poem but like you talking about what you thought of the poem after sure no problem yeah i get thanks yeah 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 for real you are a very wise man sir Thanks. I feel like on a lot of those, like, I really couldn't think of anything to say. Yeah, sometimes you would even say, you're like, I want to say something about this, but I can't think of anything. But it was good. And that was real. <laughs> uh, shout out to, uh, you just did an interview with uh, Shaylin. Yeah. Shaylin, if you're watching this, I got your book in the mail. I haven't read it yet, but I plan to. Probably tomorrow. Nice. So that's another person, uh, more than Ted Hughes, that everybody should be checking out. You're Shaylin Marks. Yeah, for real. That's a good book, dude. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that uh, what is it, that the pages get more uh, volvic in color as Yeah, you get through them. That's a neat touch. I didn't think she... <laughs> it I is. thought it was just going to be some poems. I didn't know there was some like extra aesthetic stuff about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for real, dude. No, that book, it's a, it's a beautiful looking chat book for sure, dude. All right, man. Well, you take it easy. Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. It's been yeah, an honor. Bro. Oh, man. Thank you. Take care, bro. And that was my conversation with Adam Crawford. I hope you enjoyed it. He's a fucking riot. Uh, we had a good time. And make sure you go over and follow him on Instagram. And then run over to Bandcamp to pick up those uh, audiobooks. I put a couple, as you now know, I put a couple of the poems from his audiobooks in the episode jesus fucking christ <sighs> it's been a long day um so you heard the quality of them and stuff like that 
Uh, he reads great and his shit is amazing. And I realized that if it wasn't for him reading that poem towards the end of the episode, you would think that all he does is write about cats. But no, we were just talking about at least two poems that he's written that are about cats. So I decided to add those in there. So Adam, thank you so much for reading that other poem. (laughs) Or else everyone would go, oh, the cat guy? Yeah, so he's not just the cat guy, guys. But the other thing that's cool about his thing on Bandcamp is that you can name your own price for his audiobooks. So if you want to, I mean, I guess... I'm not recommending anyone do this to the poor guy, but if you wanted to pay nothing, I guess you could get away with paying nothing. But if you wanted to give him a dollar for the album, you could. If you want to give him a dollar for each poem, you could. If you want to give him a hundred bucks just because you're a fucking big swinging motherfucker, go ahead and do that too. But so run over there and do that because that's awesome and that's the right thing to do. Um, I think it's bandcamp.com slash... Um, Adam Crawford poet but there will be a link down below that you can click to get over to his page what the fuck is happening um, is the actual title of this book um, and this will be up on Friday um, eventually sometime Friday Um, so make sure you pick that up as well this has 17 poems 32 pages the first 20 are signed and all 40 are numbered okay So that's how that one's going. And again, I don't know how many more chapbooks um, I'm going to be able to put out like this in this situation. Because again, this era of Poetic Anarchy Press, this era of my chapbooks is coming to a close and something different will be happening. We don't know what those are yet. But what I want to do before I do another fucking thing is I want to... Get into those motherfucking shout outs. So, first, I want to give a big thank you to all those motherfuckers over there on Patreon. Michael Cedar, Harry, and Michael. Thank you guys so much. Over there on the YouTube Thank You crew, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia, to Nathan, and to Cedar. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And then for the big swinging dicks over there in the Anarchy Crew, I want to give a big thank you to Nate, to Mindy, to Shaylin, to Tamara, to Adam, to JH, to Michael, to Chasey, and to Lauren. You guys are fucking awesome. I love you. And then for the biggest of the big swinging dicks, the number one chappy over there in the chat book of the month club, Caitlin! Thank you so much. And Trip, if you are watching this, you need to email me because I owe you a chat book because you got into the chat book of the month club and then got out of it. You're like, I don't fucking like this. This is shit. But you're still owed a fucking chat book, so I need your fucking address. I would love to mail you something. So please, write me an email, I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com, and send me that fucking email with your address. Now, a bunch of you could just like start sending me emails saying, I'm Trip, but I'm not going to say the last name. So you got to figure out what the last name is. If there is no last name in that email, I'm going to know you're a fraud and you're just trying to get a free fucking book, you goddamn asshole. So if you are Trip, please send me that email. If you're not Trip, send me an email anyway and say something nice because I could use it because nice things are awesome. And people who are nice get fun stuff. I appreciate you, okay? So, to recap all the things that I said are coming soon, go back and listen to the beginning of the episode, because like a dick, I said it in the front and not in the back. That's what she said. Am I right? Mm, Maybe. So, what y'all need to do now is tell someone you love or hate about this podcast and that they should listen to it Share it on social media. Do the right thing. If you have not yet gone to my website, IHateMountWall.com, and got your free ebook of a bunch of my poems and short stories, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, do you need to see a doctor? Like, it's not hard. Do the fucking thing, okay? 
Leave this show a bunch of awesome reviews, multiple accounts. I don't fucking care. However you do it. And if you want mentorship and you want all that other stuff, jump over to the YouTube page, click join, join the Anarchy Crew, join the Thank You Crew, join Chatbook of the Month Club, or get those higher tiers that give you so much more and a bunch of time with yours truly telling you what you need to do to not suck. Mm. Whatever. I'm, I'm trying to act all strong and shit right now when all I want to do is cry. We all know this, guys. So anyway, do the right thing. Join the crew. Fucking type hard. And I will talk to you all later. Thank you for listening. By the way, I, whenever I make a new one of these, I post it in the, the Poetry Lovers big group thing on Facebook. Um, whoever keeps... Uh, Fucking the moderator that keeps denying my posts because they come in the forms of links and um, not as just poems. It's not spam. It's it's poems. I'm not a bot. Fuck you. Accept my, my links. Thank you.